There's no such thing as like an event in Austin that doesn't have a band, like yeah. ever. Like even <laughs> a, a, good point. a farmer's market. Sure. You go to a farmer's market on a Sunday just to get some freaking corn that's not Monsanto, and there's a freaking <laughs> band. And they're like, tips? You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good cover of Wagon Wheel. Here you go. Hilarious. Here's a good cover of Wagon Wheel. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. The Lone Star Play Podcast is produced by TexasRealFood.com. Find out more at the end of this episode. Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Happy New Year 2022. So many twos. I love it. Um, listen, we have a great episode that I recorded right before the new year in 2021 uh, with Austin music superstar Jackie Benson. I have to say this will go down as one of the more interesting episodes we've ever done in a good way. Jackie, uh, I, I, she broke all expectations for me of, you know, what to expect of her. I know of her music. I've even seen her perform live and I met her briefly even one time. And we talked about, um, that in the podcast. Um, but this, she just is blows my mind, um, in a good way, you know, just a, a very thoughtful, insightful, deep person, thinking about things and about life way more than I ever imagined. And um, really, the pandemic um, was the spark of a lot of this. So sit back, relax. This is Jackie Benson like you've never seen her. OK, there's no interview like this of her, with her. So I found this very unique and just another side of Jackie Benson. Uh, she's one of the most top streamed musicians in America, actually, um, like online, like for streaming online, like live streaming. Um, and all during the pandemic, listen, she released five albums during the pandemic. She's got an alter ego that she, she created, um, called DJ Jackie, the robot. So she went to the Berkeley school of music. Okay. She's no slouch. Okay. If you've ever seen her play guitar, she is any good. I mean, she's just like such a great musician. She's amazing. Okay. This girl will blow your mind. Um, you may have seen her on tour. She's got some stuff coming up here. Um, check the website with everything going on, you know, places are canceling, some are rescheduling. So please just check that. Go to JackieBenson.com. You can check all of her stuff. We'll put a link in the description, um, as well. Um, and you know, follow her on her social media and go check out her uh, albums. We talk about all that in the episode, her albums and everything. She's just a phenomenal person. I got to say that. So listen, it's a great episode. Sit back, relax. I mean, you're going to really enjoy this. Just look. The way it starts off, I'm not even going to spoil this for you. The way it starts off will tell you everything about how the podcast is going to be. So without further ado, a quick word from our sponsor, Texas Real Food, and then uh, we'll be right back, okay? Because guys, we got to keep the mics on. Hi, I'm here to tell you about TexasRealFood.com. It's a great website where you can find local farm fresh food in Texas. Just enter your zip code, okay? It'll bring up Texas farms and ranches, farmers markets, farm to table restaurants, and more that are around you. It's really easy to use. Also, if you think there's a business that should be on the list that isn't on there, let us know, we'll get them added. As well as being able to enter your zip code and find all the great places around you, we also have great recipes, cooking techniques. You can learn about food and Texas food specifically. Um, and local food events that are happening in Texas. So it's a great website aside from that. And it also features, of course, the Lone Star Plate podcast that it produces. Um, we've also got some other features as well, like Food for Thought, Fresh from the Kitchen, Tasting Texas, the Texas Mom Blog, Real Food, Promptuary, a lot of great resources about Texas, all things Texas, focusing on Texas farmers and ranches and, you know, real food, y'all. Okay, so anyway, please go to Texas Real Food dot com right now and begin your texas journey for great food all right back to the show 
All right, y'all. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Listen, please follow us on social media. Go to uh, the Lone Star Plate. Just search the Lone Star Plate at Lone Star Plate TX. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube, of course. If you're watching us on there, please hit the subscribe button and the notifications. We release the uh, episode into clips on there, and we just release additional videos of out in the field and stuff like that. So uh, thank you so much for supporting us. We really do appreciate it. It really means a lot to us and the team. We're excited for the new year and the new season. We have a lot of great episodes coming up. Um, Some that just really have some, you know, uh, poder, you know, some power. They just got something behind them. And I like that. Some focus, Um, you know, they mean something. So anyway, hope you've uh, enjoyed the first few episodes we've had of the season. This is another great episode with Jackie Benson. Again, unlike you've ever seen her before, if you know her, unlike you've ever seen her, if you don't know her, here's your first impression. She's amazing. Check out her music. Here we go, guys. Jackie Benson, without further ado, on the Lone Star Play podcast. Enjoy. All right, well, you mind if I uh, take a hit off this bong and then we jump right into it? Hell yeah. Oh, my God. This is the best start to a podcast ever. <laughs> it's the best <laughs> way to get the most quality conversation out of me. I, I love it. I love it. You know what I mean? Hey, I had a comedian on one time and we uh, we drank tequila and smoked joints for three <laughs> yeah. hours. Three and hours. I thought I was going to die. By the end of it, like I, it, I, I was, I, it was really the tequila that, that put it over the top. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, the weed is the or medicine. Weed's probably what made it so that you could even hang that long, man. Absolutely. And and you just start drinking because you're talking a lot too. So you're getting thirsty and you just, oh man, it was, it was, it was fun though. I'm not going to lie. I had a blast. I had a blast. Oh yeah, anyway. man. I mean, it's like my friend, John Bune, he parties a lot. Um, and he's like, you know, being John Bune is not easy, but it sure is fun. <laughs> <laughs> and the dogs would agree. <laughs> I think uh I think Steve O from Jackass used to say that. It's like uh, you know, being one of those guys. I can't even imagine oh just God. trying just trying to go out and have a normal night. No, can't, those can't guys? Be. Oh right? man, I, a lot of those guys a lot of those guys aren't alive anymore, dude. <laughs> one of them died in a hor- horrific car wreck, absolutely. No, yeah. some of them have also like died from like later complications. Oh gosh. <laughs> Oh, no, That's they so they, they lived hard, dude. Those I grew guys, up watching them in the late 90s. Yeah. I mean, I was all about jackass. Um, they sacrificed a that. lot for our enjoyment. There is Af- no doubt. <laughs> Are you a fan? I mean, is that uh, do you get into some of that stuff? I kind of wish that, like, they could have figured out a way to do it without destroying themselves. I think what they were doing was hilarious and amazing and, like, groundbreaking. But it really just sucks that it came at such a high expense. You know? Yeah, good point. And That's and you know, point. like for everybody else, we're all like, yeah, but for them, they're probably like, ow. Yeah. <laughs> like, like every day, you know, like every day they're like in pain. And and so like, you know, it's it's a bittersweet thing. I think it's it's like not like it was like a waste of time or anything or that they shouldn't have done it. But if I could go back in time and warn them maybe, like, hey, is there a way we can make this look intense without you actually breaking your neck? <laughs> is that part of the art? Like, you know, like football, right? Like we love watching football, but look at what some of these well, football defense, players yeah. have to go through, you know, or boxing or any sort of like martial art, like UFC, you watch some of these guys just get absolutely annihilated. I'm you very, know, and you, conflicted. Right? Like, yeah, I'm very conflicted about football. I like basketball. I think basketball, I mean, those guys, they go through like knee problems later in life, but it's not like, it's one thing being an athlete and you have kind of like, like a really worn out body by the time you get to 40 or 50 and it's it's another thing um like literally being messed up in the head and like harming other people and harming yourself and you know like i i prefer the sports that don't leave it when people are like crazy from all the concussions you know what i'm saying because like body body disability sucks really bad but it tends to be less harmful to others than mental disability do you know what i mean yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it is a conflicting. Um, well, that's a great insight um, on it. Absolutely. I, I struggle with it all the time. Um, you know, trying to enjoy something that I know is not good. Oh, my gosh. My dog is like playing with this. <laughs> my dogs are here. freaking out. Do you here. hear that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I got him a new Christmas toy. My nephews are over and he just 
Rocket, please, dude. I. It's okay, this is a perfect time for a little break. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hang on, Clark. Clark, take that toy away from Rocket, please. It's just making too much noise, dude. He loves it. Take the toy, guys. Take the toy away from him. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like, what? What? I, I can't. What? All of a sudden, they're deaf. They can't hear. All of a sudden, like, I can't hear you. I this is what being the uncle man. is. Sorry. <laughs> now this is like a Joe Apatow scene, dude. Like Joe Apatow. They're trying to grab it, and the dog thinks he's playing. So now they're, they're like, just having like, this ah. tug of war. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh my no, god. Rocket, Benaki, come here. <laughs> Benaki, Rocket, Benaki. Okay, there we go. This is the. This is the. This is what's causing all the problems, y'all. Oh my this is the goodness. beauty of living in, in now, man. We don't got to cover this shit up. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, we're so open on the podcast. I mean, we just, you know, especially when we started in the lockdown, it was like, oh, look, we're, pe people are in their homes. They're, th you know, we're just going to go with, go with things at life. People don't you have know? offices anymore. People just, there's Absolutely. just like naked kids running around. This <laughs> That was always funny, like the naked baby. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah! background, you know? Like. That's funny. Yeah, kids coming into the thing. Look, I don't have kids, but, you know, I do babysit my nephews every once in a while. And, and uh, you know, after a few days, I'm, like, ready to pull all my hair out, to be honest. There's been you. several Zoom meetings in 2020 where it was a rogue kid in a diaper just kind of passes through the doorway. <laughs> And the person's always like, oh, oh, my God, I'm so stuck right back. And then I like totally. turn their video off. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing is nobody minds. Everyone's like, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like something else to break the monotony of the Zoom, whatever it may be. A uh, cat comes across. Oh, you got a cat? Oh. Yeah. That's There's like, literally only two places on Earth where you're going to find a naked baby. And that's a hospital and a person's personal residence. <laughs> <laughs> So it's let's, not really that crazy. Let's keep it that way. When you see let's, a naked baby in someone's personal home, it's probably their baby. And you know, yes, one day hope so. that baby was you. That naked yes. baby was you one day. <laughs> That's very I true. I was also that naked baby at some point. I grew up in the 80s, so there, there were different times back then. Uh, yeah, people didn't of... care. People just let their kids run around anywhere, man. People let their doors unlocked. It's weird. Yeah. That was, I used to, I, we used to ride no car seats. We would just ride like in the, literally the floorboards of cars. We would sit down in the floorboard. It's like, yeah, what is wrong? I don't understand. I remember that. that. I remember right? truck beds. Like, I remember going on the highway. I remember going on truck beds. Yeah. And it's not bad as like an 11 year old kid. <laughs> Where did you grow up in Texas? Which part of Texas you grew up in? Austin. Austin. Yeah. Always. So One always been around Austin. Yep. Wow. I was actually born here. I don't just claim it. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. That is an unusual thing. You're right. Most people, I mean, I lived in Austin seven years. I'm not from there. You know, uh, most people are transplants uh, coming yeah. and going. And that's okay. You know, transplant is good. That means you got culture. That means you got yeah. things, things are changing. That means you have opportunity because you get new ideas, new people, uh, new everything, you know, everything like overturns and resets like every 10 years. That's really cool. I've been to a town where that doesn't happen. I don't want to live in a town like that. So whenever, <laughs> whenever people are like, oh, don't move here. I'm like, no, keep moving here. Keep, keep like, do you want to be a stagnant pond in the middle of like almost no other water? Or do you want to be like a flowing river? <laughs> I want to be like a flowing river. And I've been to towns that are like stagnant ponds and they are bleak. I agree. Uh, you can, you, man, you said that really well. Uh, of course, you're a writer. You got away with words. You said that really well. That That's exactly it. Um, you know, it's funny. Anytime someone complains about the city they live in, especially Austin. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh, it used so good five years ago. You know, it's like, dude, but you were five years ago. You weren't here. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's like, what What does that mean? It's like, what What does that mean? Like, you got to come here. Mean, yeah. No one else gets to come here. I don't get it. Um, I'm with I, you. I I'm all about. I call it the good old days fallacy. I hate it. Yes, I hate it, it too. Doesn't exist. I hate the good old the good, days are the exact it's, same as now. You just exactly. don't remember the nuance. You, <laughs> yeah. you don't remember every moment. You don't remember every hour. But if you were to literally be transported back in time, you would see that the good old days are probably exactly the same now. You have probably the exact same amount of anxiety, probably the exact same amount <laughs> of like desire. You probably want something and you don't yeah. have it. It's like, let me guess, you want this person and they aren't into you, you know, like everyone has these like patterns that they go through. So it's like, 
the good old days don't exist. Literally, they don't exist because nothing exists except for right this very moment. Um, but like, they also don't exist. They're not real. The, the figurative aspect of it is not real. I, I think there's like one exception. <laughs> like maybe you're in a war-torn country and you remember the days before the war. So, okay, those people can rightfully sure. and righteously say that they remember the good old days. Yeah. But I just don't point. think that we can say that. Like, there's problems now and there were problems then and there's going to be problems down the line. There's joy now. There was joy then and there's going to be joy down the line. You know, like, I, I don't like the good old days thing. It's it's kind of like a sign of almost like a litmus test for kind of closed mind, closed, closed mindedness. Yeah. Yeah. Not I wanting like to change. Sure. Sure. You know Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. You know, it's funny too. Like um, when I lived in Europe, I remember people thinking, Oh, you're moving to Europe. It's so classy. It's so this, it's yeah. so that. And I think, and I go, well, to be honest, they're people just like us. When you get over there, you realize they got the same problems we have. The they, stuff, yeah. they deal with the same shit. There's closed mindedness over there. I lived in a small town in Spain and those people were more backwards than I, any people I ever met in Texas in my entire life, you wow. know? So it doesn't, it's not about, it's just what you said, right? It's, 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 it, it travels with you everywhere. It goes everywhere. We're all dealing with the same things, yes, to be honest. Yes, we're all with dealing you. with the same things. And it's just the only thing that we need to do every day is deal with it as healthily as we can without harming other people or ourselves. That is the goal every day. And like, people didn't realize that was the goal every day. You know, everyone else is like, Oh, well, the goal is to make money or the goal is to I'm like, no, no, the goal is to have a healthy, sound mind as much as possible every day. And when you fall off, try to get back on. Try not I to hurt. That. I love that. That's the goal. If we could all do that, you know what that is? That's society. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's and right. like, yeah, like I just social media everyone thinks social media is like ruining the world but i just don't think it is i think that it cannot be that simple it's not black and white it's not ruining the world like that there's so well, many ways in which it saved the world that's a great point um yeah what would it say about us if it was ruining the world right we are social media what are we saying <laughs> we're ruining the world which yeah, I what... scientifically is true and proven but sure <laughs> yeah i mean so climate change right we're yeah. basically looking at ourselves in the mirror and not liking what we see. I think that's what people are. That's saying. it. I think that's what they're saying, right? It's more of a projection. Uh, yes. Sort of thing. Yeah. I, I've been I dealing agree. with a lot of projecting today. I had to <laughs> get off of social media earlier just because it just like, it's one thing just creeped me out. I was just like, ugh, because it like gave me like a sight into somebody else's life that I really didn't want to see. And I was just like, ugh, that's enough for Facebook today. You know what I mean? Oh gosh, I I hear you on that stuff. Sometimes um, it's just TMI, man. Absolutely. It's TMI. It's like, look, I already got my own stuff. I don't need to. I don't need to read that. <laughs> Does that yeah. do you get caught up in some of that sometimes? Like, the, you know, um, just you know, reading random stuff or the negativity that's on there, news, whatever it may be. I've been surfing the internet for so much of my life at this point. It's about two thirds of my life I've been on the internet. I've been on the internet so long that I don't even need to read a whole sentence to know exactly what's going on. And so even just scrolling past and seeing something for one or two seconds, it will still sink in. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that. It's wow. like that uh, scene from the fifth element when Lilu is like watching the television and she's like literally like implanting history into her brain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like that, except for with bullshit on the internet <laughs> for me. <laughs> Great reference, by the way. Fifth Element. Oh, shit. I, watch it again. I love yeah. that film. I'm a big Bruce Willis fan. Well, that's like one of the best movies ever, though. Yeah, it's a phenomenal. But Gary Oldman. I love that guy. Gary Chris, Oldman. Oh, God. Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker's like big everybody, first role. Everybody gave the performance of a lifetime. Every single one of those uh, yeah, characters you're right. were perfect. Yeah. Seriously, it's point. really weird. Mila Jovovich. It. Yeah, 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 good point. Good point. Wow, look, I never thought I'd be talking about Fifth Element right now. You got to watch it again, man. It's time for I'm a refresher. You're right. Absolutely. I remember, like, the history element. Um, yeah, it's such a, such a good movie. Um, oh, yeah. That's a good movie. That's the guy, also, same like, guy that the, did uh, The Professional, by the way. Yeah. Same director. Well, also, it was like uh, another look in the mirror movie, you know? Like, yes. 
yeah. She's like, uh, why the hell should I save the world? You guys suck. Yeah. <laughs> like that's exactly. literally what she said at the end of the movie as they're trying to light that last stone. She's like, why would I save you guys? You guys suck. It kind of it's in the same vein of um, or when I watched uh, Hitchhiker's Guide, like yeah. it remi- reminded me of the same sort of vein, like thread of storytelling um, yeah. in that sense, um, which is another good sci fi sort of, you know, look at humanity and what are we doing? Yeah. Sort of thing, right. Right. You know, Jackie, something I was really uh, I was researching uh, to to do this interview, something I found absolutely fascinating that stuck out to me about you is uh, that you managed to put out five albums during the pandemic. Oh, yes. Insane. I like I've I've interviewed a ton of musicians over the past couple of years, especially especially during the pandemic, you know, recording out. Yeah, that's this is like I I never heard of anything like this This is absolutely (laughs) crazy. Well, that's one of them. Yeah. How did that happen? One of them was a live album that I had finally like kind of finished and finally finished the editing process. Sure. And we and it was just sitting on a hard drive. Oof. So one of them was that. And um, and then the pandemic hit and we knew exactly we're like, oh, sweet. We have like potentially something to release. And then another one was like this DJ project I had been preparing kind of like on the side. And then when the pandemic hit, I like. Literally, my whole brain broke. <laughs> just seeing how fast society and economy and and like whole governmental structure and everything just seeing how quickly that got sucked away into like a black hole never to be seen again it was my it broke my brain so i didn't know what to do so the only thing i could do was be in small spaces where i could control everything around me (laughs) It's the only way to like uh, deal with the fact that the world I've been living in this entire time is completely unstable and it only takes one hair trigger to throw it all off and ruin everything that you tried to plan to do. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be in a room and everything in that room I can see and touch and move and control. So, so I did that for like uh, probably two weeks in a row. And in that, I also streamed for like an hour a night. (laughs) And, um, but like that hour a night was not the only hour I spent in that room. I was in that room all the time. And uh, that's when I made Jackie the Robot volume one and two. And then, uh, then another one was I, I taped on ACL and uh, we did the taping in October of 2020. And then we released that as an album as well. That was the last time of the year. And then Vintage Machine, I actually finished in February. I was going to release it in March. And um, everything happened. So we moved the release to October. So there was about half of them. Like two of them were already kind of like ready to go. One of them was like my response to all the time I had (laughs) with my thoughts in the pandemic shutdown. It's really crazy not even being able to go to like the 7-Eleven down the street. Like totally. Yeah. It was nuts, dude. Like I couldn't, I, I get not being able to like go to the club. Like I can get used to that, but like, yeah. I can't get used to like having to get all my groceries in by like five 30. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get used to like driving around and literally seeing like, I don't know the uh, best buy, like with wood, wood, like all over their front doors. And they only have like a curbside window and like no cars in the parking lot, no cars on the highway. Like, that was crazy, dude. And no end in sight. Everything yeah. was totally indefinite. Yeah. And everybody lost. Even the most powerful people in the world were losing everything. That was crazy. So, yeah, there's never going to be structure ever again in my mind. After I saw that, I've seen too much. There's, I'm never going to trust anything ever again and anybody says oh this is the system we use i'm like oh i wonder when it's gonna fail that's gonna be that's gonna be my response to every human system that comes up and i say human because i think the only way i can trust again is maybe if like we have unbiased ai but that is a slippery dangerous slope right there then you got irobot which by the way i don't exactly disagree with the villain on irobot (laughs) but like (laughs) what i'm trying to say is uh i don't trust humans anymore and i don't trust human systems anymore 
Um, big corporations, a lot of money. I especially don't trust them because they get cocky and they never spend their money in the right place. And then stuff like Live Nation and Travis Scott happens. Got them. But like, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's like, we can't trust the people with the most money and the most power. Like that's supposed to be like, in my mind, logically, like they have the most money, so they have the best gadgets and they have the best fines and they pay people to be the best. And that's why they're up there. And it's like, nope, <laughs> they're up there because they're a bunch of creeps <laughs> and they maybe inherited it or they're in some weird club. <laughs> I don't know what that club is, but, you know, they're like in some weird like network of people <laughs> that they probably got in through their parents or something. And they're just there. They're actually qualified to be there. It's like the end of Don't Look Up. They're actually qualified to be there. They're just rich. Oh, God. And it doesn't God. mean they're extraordinary. It actually usually doesn't mean that they're extraordinary. You know, you would think the richest people would be the smartest people. No. That's true. All that came crashing down like all within like a month period last year. Wow. And that's when I made Jack the Robot one and two. So did you have any sort of inkling of that beforehand? Like had you played around with that before or it literally came from from that? It went from playing around with it to having an inkling to chasing it to actually like recording it and putting it together in a demo form that I could like record and put out right yeah it yeah. all of that was squeezed into a month period wow the idea to want to do it wow wow the idea to want to do it was before that though like i already yeah. had bought like a little I, ha I had an ipad right yeah and i found out that you can do dj stuff on ipads yeah so totally. i'd already like gotten a few apps and beat beat makers i already like bought this little a DJ table. I think you can see it right there. Yeah. Yeah. See it. it was like on sale for like a hundred bucks at guitar center. Like I already had assembled these like things together because I had this idea. I just didn't know when I wanted to pull the trigger, but then the trigger was pulled for me. And then sure. all of that happened in one month. So it wasn't like concept to completion in one month. The concept was there, but then all of the groundwork was laid in one month. Are there going to be more? Like, is this something you're going to continue? You think? Oh you yes, know, Jackie the robot. Oh yeah. Oh I my god, it. yes. Okay, that's so awesome. Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> so the world, the it. world is not back. The world is not back, and and the reason why is because it's not ever going to be the same, and everybody needs to accept that. <laughs> yeah. And um, right now, this entire year, we've been stuck between the people who have accepted that, and the people who haven't. And the people who haven't are trying to do stuff like it's all normal again, but they're all getting shut down, postponed, canceled, right? And like everyone's trying to pretend like it didn't happen. Everyone on that side is. And the people who are real about it are like, I'm going to just stay over here and just see what happens. Like we already went through last year. I'm already set up to be home. We're just going to wait it out. Yeah. So that, that's, all, that's all the people who realize that the world's never going to be the same again. They're all sitting at a good vantage point surrounded by their resources and they're waiting to see how it all shakes out and uh, at first i was one of the people who wanted to think that the world was back because there was vaccines sure and so i'm like okay it's, it's great i'm vaccinated i got my second shot it's been a month since i'm good i'm going on tour but then the variant hit in the middle of the summer and i and and everybody ended up not getting vaccinated even though they could have and then a variant came and then another variant came and that was all stuff that I failed to even consider a possibility when I was on the side of, no, everything's back to normal. Shh. You know, we're, we're yeah. living in a new world, but, you know, we can still tour. Like that, that was where I went, like this denial, you know. So then after the tour, the tour was really hard because of this denial. I'd get to these shows and there'd be no one there. We'd have to cancel them. Sometimes showing up, we'd have to cancel. Them. And I was really like, just hard. We we're driving all these miles to find that we're not even going to play the show. Yeah. And uh, it was just really, really tough. And I'm like, okay, so it's easy to be in denial when you're not literally out on the road, you know? So all the people that I was in denial with before I left for this tour, they're not on tour. They don't understand. They're all trying to make things happen in their own communities. You know, they don't understand what it's really like out here. It's like, I have to be one of those other people. I have to be a person who goes and sits in my resources and waits and sees how it shakes out. 
you know. Wow. No, absolutely. God, that's heartbreaking. Honestly, it is. Uh, what about for 2022? How does that same same scenario? Well, my strategy for 2022 is stay home unless uh, it's a number you've never seen. <laughs> 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 because I live in a state that has 30 million people in it. <laughs> Yeah. And this state gets bigger every year. That was 30 million people in 2019. I wouldn't be surprised if it was 32 million now. This, this city constantly gets you. I mean, this, sorry, this state constantly grows. And the craziest thing about it is that we have enough land in this state to fit 100 million more. Oh, and that's yeah. not even an exaggeration. That's not even an exaggeration. Did you know that the, the entire, actually, um, the entire world population can fit in the state of Texas with everyone having a 10 by 10 foot space? That's how big Texas is. How crazy is yeah. that? I'm just saying, Texas is a fertile ground for a lot yeah. of things for a lot of reasons. I mean, yeah. there's a reason why it got to be the biggest state, one of the biggest populated states in America to begin with. It's a lot of opportunity sure. here. You know, it's too expensive in Austin. Well, you got like a trillion other freaking places to, to choose. <laughs> oh, you don't want to live in Houston because the population is 10 million? Why don't you go head on over to El Paso? That's like a nice one, one million. Like, oh, one million is a lot. I, I still want that smallish town pipe. Go to Corpus Christi. They got 250, 250,000. That's nice. That's like a nice college town. You know, like I love how you know town. all the populations of the towns. I, this is awesome. Like, I, well, it's all it all has to do with tour research. Touring, okay, yeah, that's cool. Touring that's and tour research, yeah, like yeah. routing, figuring out which where to stop. Sure. I usually stop for places over ninety thousand. Um, okay, any place over ninety thousand is is a place that's ninety thousand is just as valuable as a place that's um, five million because we're only talking about getting a thousand people to a show here. Sure. And I promise you, you can get a thousand people in a population of ninety thousand to get to come to your show. And what's wow. the difference between a thousand people in New York and a thousand people in Smithville, Tennessee? Nothing. What's the difference between a thousand people paying forty dollars in New York and a thousand people paying forty dollars in Nashville? Yeah. You actually make more money because you might save money on the hotel. Sure. Yeah, that's a good Do you know point. what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. people are people. I don't care where. I don't let the illusion of cities like. I don't care. I'd rather tour like. I'm I'm cool with touring 25 places that aren't even major cities, you know. As long as as long as the people there want to see me, and as long as they're willing to pay so that I can get taken care of, you know. But anyways, I digress. What I'm trying to say is, uh, Texas is huge, and actually, what I just said ties into that. It's like okay, so LA has six million people, Houston has more, New York yeah. has eight million people, so does Dallas. Yeah. So. Why would I uproot my entire operation, potentially drive, because I have the equipment, potentially drive 800 miles to New York when I can drive 160 miles to Houston? Damn. 8 million people in Houston, 8 million people in New York. So you people definitely like, well, try to play. Don't you want to go to New York? I'm like, I've been to New York. Yeah. It's nice. It's great. But I've been there. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. It's yeah. expensive. That's and it's expensive. hard. And I have to worry about my things. And I, it's unfamiliar. <laughs> yeah. Any yeah. city that I'm not familiar with, sure. I have to worry about my things. I'm, I'm not there. I don't have resources there. I don't have family there. I'm not just anyone I can call there. Traveling is dangerous. It's hard. It's hard on the body. Hard on the mind if you're gone for months and months on end. So it's like, why? Why do that when my state has the population of like five East Coast states combined? I love it. I love that you love Texas so much. I just love the opportunity in my own backyard. I yeah. love that I don't have to leave to find these people. And sure. then after I go to a city of 8 million people, yeah, I can stay in a hotel if I want, or I can take the two and a half hour drive back home. Yeah. That's Absolutely. nice. <laughs> That's nice. You're, Jackie, here's the thing, you're... I'm not the only one who's figured this out. I'm not the only yeah. one who's figured this out. Think about how I mean, many sure. artists are are only known in Texas and not known anywhere else. Do they sure. look like they care? No. no. They, Texas they, has its own music scene, right? Uh, and no other state has. Um, yeah, there are some other states that, that can compare, just like I would say Chicago. <laughs> By the way, I think they should just rename Illinois Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally 12 million people in Illinois. 
and 10 million of them are in or around Chicago. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So yeah, that's funny. I think it should be called uh, Illinois, Chicago, not Chicago, Illinois. Sure. That's funny. <laughs> but like what I'm trying to say, Chicago can compare for that reason. It's a, it's a metroplex. But, you know, we got 9 million people in Houston, so whatever. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing about Texas. We we have so many <laughs> cities. It, like I live in Dallas right now, and Dallas has Dallas Fort Worth, right? It's this massive metro combined. I, combined. Huge. I don't know of a bigger place in the United States like this, honestly. Not that's Los all Angeles. connected. No, I mean I've been all over. I've lived up north. I used to live in Philadelphia. Like even that area could maybe compare where everything's real close together. You know this that. But Dallas for words, all the little towns in between that connected to. Crazy. You drive for hours without it's ever hitting empire. countryside. Yeah, it's a it's an empire. I mean it's absolutely yeah. insane. But um, there's like two of those in Texas. You know, like exactly most yeah. places, the <laughs> empire of their place, if they even have one, takes up the whole state. Yeah, and it's all they're known for, right? Like. Exactly. Texas has all these pockets that we're known for, you know, and it's so different and unique. And, uh, you know, Austin is considered the live music capital of the world. What, what do you think yeah. of that title? Do you think that's apropos? Um, I do think that people experience live music in Austin, unlike any other city in America. Uh, it's everywhere. It's in the grocery stores. Yeah. It's like yeah. out on the lawn. It's yeah. free. It's cheap. It's, there's like 200 venues. There's, and I mean like literally 200 venues. I don't mean like that as an exaggeration. Most places maybe have a maximum of 45 or 50. Um, Austin has like three times the amount of venues of any other place because oh, wow. Austin turns anything into a venue. Yeah. <laughs> like somebody's front yard will be a venue for like sure. a block party one day. <laughs> you know, there's like always something happening. I've never seen so much live music happening simultaneously in a city as as I've seen in Austin. Yeah. But I will say that doesn't mean that other towns don't have live music. You know, like there's so much unbelievable, legendary music that comes out of Houston and Dallas. It's crazy. People don't even understand. That's like that's where Beyonce came from. Like people don't understand the amount of national stage Texas takes up as an entire state. So like Austin doesn't like take all the credit or anything. But I think what that phrase actually means is that it's just really, really intense in the culture down here. There's no such thing as like an event in Austin that doesn't have a band. Like yeah. ever. Like even <laughs> a, a, good point. a farmer's market. Sure. You go to a farmer's market on a Sunday just to get some freaking corn that's not Monsanto. And there's a freaking <laughs> band. And they're like, tips? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good cover of Wagon Wheel. Here you go. Hilarious. Here's it could cover a wagon wheel. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> that's so true. Wow. That's so uh that's it's everywhere, so true. dude. I think people like move here, they get shocked by it, they start rolling their eyes at it. It's like, yeah, did you not know where you were moving? The airport, right? Anywhere you're at, you're right. Grocery store, anywhere. Everywhere, dude. Everywhere. I'm gonna get my charger real fast and I'm gonna tell you a story. Yes, there we okay, go. That's so what I like. This is a personal experience. Okay. I will tell you one of the many places in Austin I have played. And this is one of, this is a special list of places where not only was it in Austin, it only ever would have been in Austin. <laughs> so one time I played a show, one to one bar, and it went really well. It was like 190 people, almost sold out. Really, really good, good night. And then like two days later, uh, this guy emails me. I didn't have a booking agent at the time. And he's like, hi, I worked at the Honda dealership on Steck and Mopac. And uh, <laughs> I'm just wondering, we've been thinking, you know, we, we often have a lot of people waiting on their cars in the maintenance center. You know, there's a guest waiting area for them to wait on their cars. And we were thinking we'd really like to have a musician in and uh, maybe you could play like a 90 minute set. Just take a little break in between. If you could bring your own speaker. There's nothing crazy, just solo, just something to entertain the guests at the car dealership. <laughs> We'll pay you $500. I was like, yeah, hell yeah. 500 bucks? Hell yeah. My rent at the time was 600 bucks. I was like, hell yeah. Yeah. You were like rent paid. You think people are playing at a car dealership anywhere else for $500? That's hilarious. I've never heard of that, actually. That's, That's a first. one of like thousands of gigs I've played in this town. I played next to uh, the coconut bins at Whole Foods for their corporate 
Like <laughs> they had this big corporate party where they have all these different managers come down from all the different stores. And I played by the coconut bins. Like literally <laughs> they provided the PA system. So it was nice. That is nice. The corporate party, they paid me like a thousand dollars. Oh my God. Get that corporate money, right? It's yeah. Like corporate money. To play for 45 minutes next to some coconuts. That is hilarious. That's Austin, that's, dude. Nowhere awesome. else. I swear to God. Anywhere else, they'll, because it's Austin too. So it's like all these rich companies, right? They pay really well. Yeah. They ask yeah. you to do the weirdest things. Like, hey, can you play next to the bushes on the entryway to our house for this private party? <laughs> We'll give you free food all night and give you like three thousand dollars. <laughs> There's like so many rich people here; it's insane. And they do this, and they like fall for that whole thing where it's like live music, live music, and they they like think that they need to have live music everywhere. Which don't get me wrong, live music is great, but you don't really need it next to where people are trying to get some coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I'm not going to say that. Um, you can make the check out to Jackie Vincent. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You know, these are all just like silent thoughts. These aren't things I'm saying out loud. I love. <laughs> these are like, yeah, coconuts. You got it. So that check will be J A C K I E. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> just like my website. I actually <laughs> saw you play uh, Jackie at um, one time many years ago at the Gibson Showroom. Oh well, that's uh, a real place. That's a real video. That's not yeah. Like that that. <laughs> I, I I can't. I was trying to think of what it was for. Uh, I used it must to have been uh, a recording academy party. It was. I used to cater the rec- for for the recording academy a lot there in Austin. Their Christmas party and just different events they had. And I can't remember what it was. Maybe it was South by or something. It could have even have been the Christmas party. I can't remember. But you played and you were phenomenal. That was the first time I. I I saw you play. I was like, wow. I think it was the Christmas party and it was December 2017. 17. That's probably right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You were amazing. I saw Facebook memories pop up from that. It's funny you bring it up. (laughs) Yeah. I I did it three years in a row where I, you know, catered the the whole thing. That was a crazy night for me because I'd have to do the food, the alcohol, take care of the artist too, make sure. I I hope the food you had that night was good. I know you probably. Oh, it was. I always eat food at those parties and it's rad. I think okay. uh, I think they had uh, Milam whiskey that night. I can't they remember. My- I made the drink. God, your memory is better than mine. No, because I, that's my crazy. friend Marsha Milam owns Ben Milam whiskey. Now, shout out Got to the local Texas company right there. Yes, shout out. Absolutely. And yeah, she, sure. uh, I think she, that was like one of her first parties that she got like her brand out there. Got so, it. Relatively new. Relatively. Got it. Yes, yes. No, Absolutely. What oh, are yeah. some other what, what are some other like food? Um, let's talk food a little bit there in Austin. Yeah. You know, I'm a I'm an ex chef uh, there from Austin. Had my food truck for many years. Um, nice. So any like, what's some of your favorite food trucks to go out there in Austin and go go eat at? Food trucks or restaurants? Well, you know, it, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm trying to think of where I went recently where it was a really good food truck. Okay, so there's this place like right right in Mueller okay. and it's a taco truck like somewhere around like Maynard yeah. and uh, where Mueller is and uh, it's I'm pretty sure it's called Guadalajara okay yeah <laughs> it'll be kind of hard to find because food trucks don't usually have websites yeah. but like uh, it's over here and it's this really amazing taco truck and me and uh, I've been to I've been to it many times for different like breakfast taco needs I'll have to get the name of it but uh, that's probably it. Guadalajara. That that's just just a side note. Shout out to the fans. That's where my brother was born. That's yeah, where my mom's from too. That's where my mom's from. Uh, like uh, uh, Mueller area. No, Guadalajara, Mexico. Oh, literally Guadalajara. Yeah, okay. L- literally yeah. Guadalajara. Yeah, it's yeah, a spe- yeah, it's a specific type of food. So if someone puts on that on their food truck, that means they're serving that style of of food from that region, which is great. I love that food. Yeah, it's like corn to- corn tortillas, and they're always fried, and like it's so good. And it's like yeah. really simple stuff, you know. Like this, yeah, yeah. Put everything together, chop it up, put some onions in it, and then it's just like boom! It's always like piping hot, and it's just like, fresh. Oh, it's so good! It's All my right. favorite. My favorite. Hell so, yeah. yeah! Like I like the places in Austin that like nobody knows about. Yeah. <laughs> there's like a gr- there's like a group of restaurants that everybody does know about that I do love. Like, I love Rudy's barbecue. Like, everybody wants to talk about, like, Franklin's and shit. But, like, Rudy's is really good. 
And mm-hmm. also you can have like a lot of different options of different types of cuts. Yeah. And I okay. like it a lot. I like okay. it a lot. And okay. um, I've been eating it since I was a kid. Maybe it's just a good memory. I don't know that people don't like it, but I like it. So. That's okay. Hey, that's hey. So I actually just had Goldie's, uh, the guys from Goldie's Barbecue on. They just got named the number one barbecue spot in Texas. Oh, well, they're probably uh, better than Rudy's because they're probably a little bit more nuanced. Look, like, uh, look food, food's, food's, my, food, food's my thing. So I'm going to have a little bit different opinion than just say about anything. Right. Yeah. Just like you would yeah. about music. Right. You, you're going to have that. a look. Your opinion is going to be just a little more nuanced, and that's how I am about food. So for me, Rudy's is not my choice, but I'm not a food shamer either. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I, I let people eat whatever the hell they want. It's going in their body. Get whatever you want. I stop at Taco Bell every once in a while. I don't like it. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay, I but I do it. The same category as Taco Bell. <laughs> it kind of is. To me, it is. It's all the Dude, same to me. Uh, just because I know how they prep that food at Rudy's. Oh, that's like I know I know how they prep to, you know, get some of that food. But look, I, I'm all about I don't care. You know, I've stopped at Rudy's. Um, in fact, the OG Rudy's off of um, what is the road uh, uh, heading out towards uh, uh, out west towards the hill country? Isn't Waltz, the OG? Carlton. Is it over there? Right. Off of. Um, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the road, but that's a great Rudy's. Nope. It's called 360. That's it. 360. That's my favorite yeah. Rudy's. That, so that place is legit. About. Yeah, that place is legit. So I'm with you. I got you. <laughs> I also, I got you. you know, the there's this, there's this new barbecue place downtown called Cooper's. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. I know Cooper's. Yeah, I know Cooper's. Pretty I've good. actually had Aaron Franklin on the podcast, too. I've interviewed him about barbecue. I can't um, stand in line. I'm sorry, Franklin. I'm never going to stand in line. Look, I, I did it one time um, for, for the for the joy of it. I will say this and tell our listeners as well and anyone that's done it. Um, there is an experience to waiting in line that's not what you think it is. And I exp- and I had to learn that myself because I was in the of the same mindset. But once you go and do it, you realize, wow, th- this is not even about the barbecue. This is about the community and hanging out and telling jokes and stories and meeting all these great people. And y- you honestly have the best time of your life. The last time I went and stood in line for barbecue for Goldie's, I waited six hours in line. I didn't sit down one time. I was standing up the entire time talking to people. It flew by. So I got to say, it made the experience so much better when I actually ate the food. And I'm not saying every time to do that, but one yeah. or two times, one, one or, or two, two times, times, I think it's worth it. I really do. Take your friends. You do it. It's fun. The, just the people you meet. I'm all about meeting people. So yeah, I enjoy no, that That makes experience. sense. I, I can see how that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, when it comes to I like comparing food to music, what what do you think about this idea that like, you know, you were describing the food about the food truck earlier about it's just fresh and simple and they, you know, right, bring in that preparation. Is, do you feel like do you approach music that same way? It just needs to be fresh and simple and you'll get sort of the best thing. You know what I mean? Like food's all about sourcing the right ingredients. Yeah. What is it about music that makes it good? Is it, you know how do we compare sourcing the right ingredients to music? Like what, what's the correlation there? I would say individuality. Um, okay. It's kind of like, like what you're saying. Um, Rudy's and Taco Bell are not that different because they use the same ingredients or they at least use the same supplier. Like maybe yeah. the individual ingredients of Taco Bell are not literally the same, but they're all provided by like Cisco. Sure. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, uh, so while Taco Bell makes me sick and Rudy's doesn't, it still all comes from the same like umbrella. And um, so like when people try to make music because they want to be popular or because they want other people to like it. And so they're weird, like, cause this is all subjective by the way. So like, and it's all intangible. Like when you make music, it's not like something that they're eating and tasting. It's, it's completely intangible. And so like, um, when people are like, I am going to sound like the popular person these days and that I'm going to do well in music. It's like, that's not tangible. You, you can't even, you can't even pinpoint why each individual person is successful to the point where, where you can copy them. Like you just can't. Yeah. And so when people try, it's like this sterile, like, it's like staying in a hotel versus staying in an Airbnb or something. Or like eating out at a, an okay restaurant or a pretty good restaurant or maybe a chain versus like getting a home cooked meal by someone who really knows how to cook. Yeah. 
it's like it's an impossible thing to describe. But when I hear music that was not made from the individual, from within the individual, um, it's instant. It's like literally two, three seconds. I'm like, are you making this face? Yeah. You know, yeah. like, like I'm smelling a bad ingredient or something. Or like sure. I'm smelling a sterile cleaning supply that like I know is in other terrible restaurants. <laughs> like you said, you know too much. <laughs> yeah. Like you walk yeah. in, you smell the soap. You're like, oh. Yeah, yeah. I can be you know, a, like you I can be know. a pain in the ass to go out to eat with sometimes. I'm not yeah, lie. yeah. Like you, you walk in and you just like know by the types of napkins they're using. You're exactly. like exactly, oh. exactly. Yes, you get it. You get it. That's like, exactly right. So, like when I when I when someone starts, hey, listen to my music or or check out this new person I found, and they press play, within three seconds, I'm either gonna notice something and be like, oh, yeah, or I'm gonna be like. I've never heard this this before. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. You know, that's really cool. That is, that is really cool. I bet you get that a lot, right? People sending you music, check this out, listen to this. Can you get me started? Does that happen a lot with you? Do people (laughs) like try want you to get them started somehow? Yeah. Like like, (laughs) what the hell do you, who do you think I am? Like, (laughs) Do you think I am? Because this is who I think I am. And we're going to talk about my perception of myself. I am a person who has had the privilege to develop a skill. Um, That skill happens to be something that can be enjoyed by other people. I have now designed that skill, which is something I'm passionate about, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to pursue it the way I did. So the skill that I'm passionate about, I have monetized by presenting it to people in such a way that they feel entertained. And so what they are paying for is not, in fact, my music. They're actually paying for the entertainment. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, I never heard it put that way. That's great. Entertainment is really valuable. You know, like people are like, oh, money always ruins music. I'm like, not if you not if you stay rooted in who you are and not if you find something that you feel like is a part of you, but that is also entertaining. I've seen all sorts of stuff that's entertaining. (laughs) Doesn't have to be music. Doesn't have to be songs. Doesn't have to be singing. I've seen people get up and just do drum beats and just play the drums. And that's entertaining. And they go on tour and they didn't have to write lyrics or do any of that. You know, they just found a way to be entertaining, rooted in something that they're that's unique about them. And uh, that's what's monetized, not the music, not the passion, not the love for it. What's monetized is the uh, the entertainment aspect of it. I mean, you kind of have to make money, right, to keep doing it. I don't see yes. it. how else. Well, because earlier happens. I said I am a person who had the privilege to spend my entire life developing a skill. That is a privilege. Um, you know, my sister told me a long time ago that art is a privilege, and she's right. Blew my mind. I'm like, it is. You're right. Art is a well, privilege. Th- think about if you're poor, you're str- you're working three jobs, you're trying it's to get. You don't have time to worry about art. What does art mean to you? You know what I mean. What does art so, mean to you if you're malnourished. Exactly. I agree like, with that. Art is a what, privilege. Are you going to spend money on a guitar or are you going to spend money on feeding your kids? Yes. You're not even going to have the thought of a guitar. You know what I mean? Like, you're not, that's not even going to cross your mind. Uh, you're stoked to have a day off that week. Exactly. <laughs> One day. Yes. One day. Absolutely. And that's the life. That's life for a lot of people. And um, so, what I'm saying your, is your sister's a smart person. Yeah, art is a privilege, and I see myself as a person who was privileged enough to pursue art as a living. And now I don't see myself as this like figure. Um, I see myself as this person who offers a service. And sometimes I need to get paid for the service, but sometimes I donate the service. You know, I'll do live streams for free. Um, I don't do gigs for free, but that's because it costs money to do gigs. You yeah. know, I have to pay people. <laughs> to help me do the get i have to pay a sound man to pay the band you know yeah like the only time i start charging money is when it starts costing me money it's out of pocket stuff right yeah yeah that makes sense that that, that makes total sense so that's how i'm able to share my art so freely on the internet because that's that's kind of like my contribution for the privilege that i've had to pursue in the first place i see wow wow that's very uh respectful honestly uh jackie because there's a lot of artists that don't have do not think like this at all. Um, I, I think they just have a complete different mindset than this. Um, 
Do you think it has a lot to do with just you being independent or how you were raised like this? Or how did this happen for you? Come to well, it has to of... do with this allergy to stuff that's not genuine. You know, like as soon as I detect, like they're not you got doing a bullshit it, meter. You got the bullshit. Yeah, meter. my bullshit meter is very yeah. sensitive. The artists yeah. that I gravitate to are the artists who I see pictures of like. They're just putting time in like so so obsessively because they can't do anything else and here's the other thing we were saying earlier art is a privilege there are many people out there who are not privileged who figure out still a way to do art and that's some of the most amazing art i've ever seen um and those are the people i can dig the people who will do it even if they can't afford to do it they still find a way to do it and you know like that you don't have to have that requirement to be a true artist but I do believe that in another life or in another dimension where maybe I didn't have such a great support system, I think that I probably would have fought to do it anyway, just because of how much I think to do it and how much I want to do it and how it's the only thing I think is meaningful for me, you know? And there are other people like that out there. And those are the artists I gravitate to. And that's the music I'll listen to for more than 15 seconds. Do you know what I mean? Or or the movies I'll not fast forward to and then just be like, all right, what's on Hulu? (sighs) So you approach like what you watch on TV sort of the same way, the same filter as music. Oh, yeah. I I think the most exciting form of art for me besides music is uh, movies. Yeah, me too. Movies are just like, and they just keep getting better and better. And then after that, my favorite form of art after that is video games. Yeah. I'd probably have to say like, I'm recent. I'm recently just got into gaming a little bit. Like oh my I'm God, old. So I'm old. There's a lot of buttons. I'm trying to get I like catch up to it. Uh, but it is fun, like playing with my friends. And there's something about again for me. I guess it's about the people. Again, just like the barbecue line. It's not even the line. It's not even the game for me. It's really just playing with people and yeah. enjoying that moment. You know, I suck at gaming. What What are some of the games you like to game on? Well, I just like I like story games. Because I like the writing and I like the animation. Oh like, wow! Okay, did that. Yeah. Like I love like, like Resident Evil. I love scary games. Oh uh, shit! Okay. Oh, like people did that. They like You're thought right. about that, and they and that monster that just scared the shit out of you. Somebody drew that, and then yeah. somebody <laughs> animated that. That is yeah. just like whoa! Like whoa! So amazing. You're and same right. with movies. Same with movies. Like, I love horror movies because I think they're art. Somebody had to design that monster. Absolutely. Somebody had to design that gro- that 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 um ghost. Somebody yeah. had to make that music make you feel the way that you're feeling right now. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. You what know, somebody best... had to come up with that story. Like that's a good point. Like yeah. It's just such a huge, like movies are such an an astounding collaboration. Like, like that an is album, true. I could pump true. out an album with with like three people like maximum like i i could do a whole album with two people me and one other person i could do a whole album literally um it maybe wouldn't sound the way that i would want it to sound but i could do it yeah i don't think two people could make like a feature length like modern movie no way Hell yeah me. that's that's a good point it's definitely a team um <laughs> I, I i tried to be an actor for a little while when i lived up in philadelphia so i worked on yeah. a few movie sets you know as a a background artist they like to call it really you're an extra yeah. right um and it, it's an army of people i, I mean you're talking mm-hmm. an army of people all working collaborating on this little thing that goes in this little frame yep that's it you're, you're all you're worried about is everything that all the work you know the 15 hour days you're on your feet it's raining you're, you're just like it's miserable and you're doing it for like these split second moments it's crazy it's it's, it's actually really crazy and it takes insane. months and it takes like even the cheap movies are still like three million dollars. Yeah. And that's like that's like a the only time I've seen a, a movie crush it with with a small crew and a small budget is when it's found footage. Yeah. It's only it's only very specific yeah. genres that can yeah. pull off small crews. But like you want to do something like. Oh, my God, there must have been a thousand people that worked on that Matrix movie. We watched the credits, the credits for 12 minutes. It's 12 minutes of scrolling. Must yeah, have been like, you're right. People. Must have been like literally 1,500 people. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's funny. You know, we had uh, Katie Featherston, 
who was the star of Paranormal Activity. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, we had her on. And she, that's a great interview. That one is still, that one gets so many downloads every month. Like, people still love that interview. Oh, hell yeah, uh, man. That's one of the kings of found footage right there. Absolutely. Her insight on, like, how that was made and the butt. It's so, it's honestly it blew my mind open about filmmaking and low budget and horror and all the stuff we're talking about. It's a great interview to to check out. So I'll check uh, it out. Was, yeah, I'm gonna guess it was probably still a crew of at least twenty. You know, they had more people on it than I thought. Exactly, you're thinking, yeah, oh, I mean, it was just like three like people big, that did this. No, it was no, a lot of people that like made it ha- exactly. Yeah, that's how much yep. I'm guessing right now. And they had to do like all these different passes that I didn't know about. Like they had to come back, reshoot, come back, do this, come back, do that. You know, go to the go to this studio for sound mixing. Go to this yeah. uh, for for color. You know, to color it or. It was like, oh wow, okay. So there's a lot of people that put this together. It wasn't just like yeah. you, you three in your backyard. No, you know that, that that's how they make it seem. But like you said, there's a lot of moving parts to it, and it seems like it's just a video camera, right? But it's more than that. It's like everything that it took to get to that. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh that's man, crazy. but like, it's it's even more than that in some ways too. Like for me, the art of movie making is like the the work of the DP and the camera people. Yeah. That always just like, I'm just like, wow, I've never seen that shot before. Ah! <laughs> That's I find awesome. myself like thinking that whenever I watch movies. I was like, I watched, did you ever watch yeah. that uh, movie, The Harder They Fall? The Western, like with an all black cast. W- with Idris Elba? Yes. Fucking loved that movie. Regina King. That yes. girl is one of my favorite actors. Regina King is the shit. Yes. She's, okay. she's like, every, yes, I saw, I loved it. That, oh my God. The guy who played the main guy with the cross. I love that actor too. He plays oh. in Loki. Yeah. He plays, um, oh, what's his he name? He plays Kang. Kang, yeah, Kang? he plays Kang. Yeah, he Kang. plays Kang. No, no, Kang that's it. Kang? I can't remember. Kane. Kane, yeah, yeah, he plays yeah. Kang. That's the same. Okay, so dude, oh, some of the name? shots, oh, God, some God. of the shots in that movie. Wow. Yeah, it's like, yeah, dude, I this agree. is like, innovative filmmaking like yeah i need someone to talk to about this like i have never (laughs) seen a shot like that like there was there were some times there was one time also john wick oh my god john wick there's sometimes where like the camera goes down the arm out the thing the bullet and then it goes to the bullet it like starts at the arm and like it's almost like the bullet's coming from the shoulder but really oh my god and then it like switches over to somebody else doing this and it's like wow I just had to let it's it out. Crazy, man. right? I love I it. I'm, it I get excited. I, I get just excited uh, as you about this. Stuff. I love hearing you uh, as excited about. You know, editing has a lot to do with that. I've edited videos yes. myself, and so editing 100%. is. So it's where everything comes together. Yes, but it's the shots, really where they you have build to have it. The shots, though, yeah, you got to have the together. shots to work with. Exactly, you got to have the Ugh. shots to work with. It's Again, so like you said, it's a team effort. Like you said, it's yeah. a team. It's all these people having to do their best at different times, not even at the same time, right? Yeah. Like, Sometimes not even really being able to talk to each other a lot. Yeah. To kind of you, like handle six it. months down the road, it's like, yeah. well, we're going to do this now to the movie. Oh, shit. I, like, I just don't even know how they do that stuff. Find the right energy, and it all somehow gets, you know, Frankenstein together, and it's beautiful. And then it, I mean, like, that that's like, why when you see a good movie, you got to respect it because it's hard to put together a good movie. These days, whenever I see like the cutting edge movies, especially the stuff that Disney's putting out, and by Disney I mean Disney in all of its co- companies, so like all of their Marvel stuff, yeah, yeah, all of their Pixar stuff, all of their freaking Star Wars stuff, The Mandalorian. Yeah. Have you seen The Mandalorian? Oh yeah, absolutely. <sighs> And they develop new technology with the Mandalorian the that's going to be used LED now. Screens. Yeah, yes. and so that's like, going to be used in the future of filmmaking. Forever, I mean, it. it was used in Loki. You can tell if you look yeah. at, if you watch Loki, you can tell because there's no way a planet that they're supposed to be on. There's no way that's not that's not green screen. I know what green screen looks like. Yeah, that looks like they're on a planet. Like that looks like you can walk up to the screen and just smash right into it because you totally totally thought it was fake. Would you ever direct anything? I could see you doing no. something like that. Really? Okay. So in order in order for me to get involved in the movie business, I need to be excellent at it. So what I would need to maybe do- Maybe not a like, movie, but like a music video, you know, m- maybe more intense music videos. I know you have some and I'm sure you've had your input and, you know, whatever, but- 
Yeah, I have some videos that are a little more complicated than just me performing the song. Yeah. But also I do I did have some like ideas for like a movie album, like a video album. Um but they mostly have to do with the performance of it because I haven't figured out how to make myself cinematic without it being just like cheesy. <laughs> like like glee cheesy. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure, like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> like what the hell? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? They're like, all right, cue the wind. Cue yeah. the wind, yeah. <laughs> leaves, go. Just fucking yeah. leaves coming at yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like back to the napkin in the restaurant with you, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh. Totally. I can't I don't know how to make That's myself funny. cinematic, but have this vibe. I'm such like a such like a realist, you know, after you talk to me. So if you've heard any conversation with me and then you try to see some cinematic thing with me, it's just gonna seem real weird because like I'm just not that kind of person. <laughs> like how do I like capture my kitschy like like a uh, yeah right attitude cinematically without it being campy? I haven't been able to answer that question. So I haven't really gotten into that yet. <laughs> that's what the pros are for i don't know yeah exactly if i get the budget one day i'll get the budget and i'll uh pay some director to realize that shit for me <laughs> i love that <laughs> i love that um <laughs> okay um okay well jackie let's um what what should we um i i, I know you we're, we were talking about 2022 and you know you do, I, I noticed that you do have some shows on the book so uh, this episode is going to come out right at, you know, middle of January here. So I don't know. Should people, I guess, just check your website and see if the shows are still on or still going or or how? Yeah, just keep 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 on my website. And I'm really just playing in Texas for the first yeah. few months of the year. I might I might be flying up to Boise, Idaho at the end of March and playing this play thing called Tree Fort Fest. But I'm really not sure. Because Omicron. I, I think it's going to happen. There's no whispers of anything that I'm playing postponing. Like I haven't even yeah. gotten like a heads up email. Um, oh, that like, may you know, stay on the lookout. This may or may not I be happening think, sort of thing. Yeah. This is what I think. Okay. So the first, the first COVID that hit America shut everything down indefinitely. The second COVID was a, was a variant and it was a really strong variant and it was called the vaccine, the, the pandemic of the unvaccinated and it was killing like 1500 people a day. It was insane. So everyone got scared again. And then this Omicron variant has been not so bad for vaccinated people. The Delta variant scared more people into getting vaccinated. So now we have less hospitalizations than before. There's a little bit of a spike going on right now. But basically, the summary of it is, I think that they're just going to make every event vax and negative COVID tests required. Got it. And, um, and then in negative COVID tests within 48 hours. You know what I mean? Because I did, I did a few shows like that where I had to prove that I was vaccinated and also prove that I had taken a COVID test. All of things that are no problem for me. So I don't think that my shows are going to be affected. I think that they might be socially distanced. Um, but I don't think that they're going to be canceled, but yeah. I really don't know. So totally. keep an eye on my Absolutely. website. <laughs> yeah. It's all up in the air. Yeah. You know, follow you on social media, right. Keep up with your website and, um, yeah, that, that'll be the best way. Um, really is there anything else? Uh, is there anything else I didn't mention that you wanted to shout out or I, I you know, just want to make sure I didn't. Oh, well just tell people follow me because I'm going to be coming out with some new projects this year. So. Oh yeah. Oh, you're still busy. Look at you. Oh yeah. Well, because I'm home now. I'm in the yeah. I'm in the wait and see period to where I'm like not leaving Texas unless it's a number I never seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they cover my plane tickets. But yeah, <laughs> I'm not leaving. Like if you see me leaving Texas, it's like oh, there's that number she's never seen. Yeah, there's the That's all you the need to know as like a spectator. sold out. Madison Square Garden. You're like, yeah. I'll be there. I'll be, I'll be there. there. Or like, I'll be there. <laughs> or like Bill Gates. You know, you know, kids' birthday party or something. <laughs> or not Bill Gates. I guess Jeff Bezos. You know, some billionaire, or whatever. Some All of a sudden, I'm going to Seattle, playing the hey, Bezos Fest. Elon Musk is there in Austin, right? You never know. He's <laughs> well. Always... I'm gonna leave Texas for that. Exactly. That would be be that would be the best. I'll still charge an Elon Musk tax. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It seems like you exactly. paid anyway. 
<laughs> I know, right? He'd, he'd probably just flex it and be like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'll double it. I uh, know, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'll double it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, Jackie, I got to say, uh, this has been absolutely amazing. You're quite a personality. Um, I, I love talking to you. I love hearing your thoughts on things and your insights. Um, your energy is super contagious, and I, I really, really enjoyed uh, our conversation. Well, thanks for having me on. And, you know, it's not always like a really cool, easy podcast. Like, it's not, a, not everyone's always easy to talk to. You're really easy to talk to. So thanks for that. Awesome. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to have fun. And, and, uh, that's it. Life's not too serious. It's not rocket science. We're not saving lives here. Exactly. We're just having a good so, time. Yeah. We're just having a good time. So, well, anyway, Jackie, uh, please enjoy the rest of your holidays. Um, have a happy new year and, um, yes, we'll be looking out for your shows, uh, coming up and, uh, all your new projects. So my best to you and your family and, uh, please take care. Thank you again for coming on taking the time. Likewise, man. Happy new year. And we'll all see you around soon. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time.